Debuting as a K-pop idol is hard enough on its own, but debuting under a small company makes it even more difficult. But why? While we all have our favorite groups and soloists, it's always exciting to find a new group that we haven't heard of before. Going through the discography and getting to know the facts about the artists always bring a rush to every K-pop fan. And while it's always great to find a new group that we haven't heard about, it's much harder when the group comes from a smaller company. A smaller company never has a budget as big as a huge famous company to promote the group or make their videos look like a Marvel movie. While online, it's normal we find out about groups through tweets and song recommendations, South Korea is still all about music shows. And getting into one as a small group is harder than it looks. The slots of each music show are primarily taken apart by the big companies. The hardcore truth got revealed by a Twitter account of the girl group Craigsy when a fan asked them to send the group to music shows to gain new fans and exposure. The official account replied, Being casted in a major music show is a really hard task. Every week, more than 60 groups apply for the music shows. Unfortunately, only 13 to 18 groups can be casted in music shows. So when these slots are taken by big companies, the unknown small groups have nowhere to promote their comeback. Fans of smaller groups have been vocal about the unfairness for years now. One person on Twitter said that they are seeing the downfall of small groups coming from small companies that no matter how hardworking and talented the group is, they don't even get the chance to show it since they're overshadowed by the groups coming from the big companies. But it's not only fans who notice the unfairness in this. A cram pop member Wei revealed some insider info on how the music shows really work. She said that out of the list of all the freshly debuted groups, those who would come first would perform. However, big companies play a major role in this. Wei spilled that if a big company had a group in the front of the line, all the groups from the same company would promote together, therefore pushing the smaller groups in the back, as that's what happened to cram pop. This is why newly debuted groups from bigger companies get the spots immediately, especially if any of their seniors are having a comeback at the same time. This issue of company privilege is a thing discussed over and over among K-pop fans, but there is some truth to it, especially when it comes to attention that is nearly guaranteed. New rookie groups are full of fresh looks and talent, so there's a higher chance people who like artists from a particular company will check them out. However, there are also negatives that come with debuting under a big company. There are constant comparisons to their seniors, and many people say the younger group didn't really earn their success and had it handed to them on a golden platter. Still, smaller companies might have literal perfect idols up their sleeves, but when people don't know about them, it's hard to make it big. These days, it's mostly viral moments that bring small groups to the spotlight and jumpstart their career. Once a small group gains attention, they have the chance to save their careers, and in many cases, even their company. Groups like BTS, Mamamoo, Infinite, and Seventeen all came from small companies, and it was only the group who made them big. Another thing is budget. It's impossible to deny that rookies who debut in a bigger company have way more resources to help them start, be it the quality of a music video or the rollout of their debut or a comeback. One person said, It's how much money by the big three plus one is paid to the TV stations and YT as advertisement. This automatically guarantees more wins and fancy titles like Super Rookie. It's not just the privilege. It's the total lack of fair play that's the worst part of K-pop. The unfairness between groups from small companies and the ones from big companies goes even deeper. Cram Pops' way said that popularity also decides who gets which waiting room. The more popular the group, the better the room. She recalls that when they debuted, they were sharing one room split with dividers with another small group, and they even had to bring their own seating mats. The industry veterans usually got a big personalized waiting room with a bed and a TV. All the disadvantages of being in a small company raise questions. Why do so many trainees go to debut there? Wouldn't it be easier to just go to one of the big companies and have a smoother ride from the get-go? Well, not exactly. All the trainees have the end goal of becoming an idol, but it's easier to become one in a smaller company due to very high standards held by a big company. So for example, a big company might reject a trainee or don't call them back, while the smaller company might find them just fine. The trainee system in the big four is unbelievably brutal, with trainees that are meeting all the high standards of a big company, so the chances of making it to the final group lineup are slimmer. Only the best of the best will debut, so there's a chance that the trainee life might prolong for many trainees. There are way too many stories of trainees leaving a company and signing under a smaller one where they made the lineup way quicker than they would in the bigger one. For example, Yo Sang and Woo Young left a big hit to sign under KQ Entertainment and later debuted in 80s. Or Solmi, who only got to represent JYP and Produce 101 in IOI, but later left the company to sign under the Black Label, which while a subsidiary company of YG, is still considered small. Still, joining a small company is a huge risk, much larger than making it to a big company. After all, it's starting from square one and there are no familiar faces or teachers. It's all new. The training might be completely different standards since not many smaller 
other companies can afford the best vocal trainers and choreographers. Another thing is the trainee debt. When you don't make the money the company put into you during the training period, you have to pay it from your own pocket. Oftentimes, it's years before the artists pay off their trainee debt. Luna Zolotin revealed that she hasn't been paid ever since debut, despite Luna debuting in 2016. Lockberry Creative's shady financial techniques have been criticized online for years, so at the end of the day, it's not that shocking that none of the 12 girls have been paid. It isn't until the contract renewals that artists get to negotiate how much they're going to be paid. In extreme cases, the artists can sue the company and demand to end the contract, like BAP did in 2014 with TS Entertainment. The small entertainment company can't secure them spots in music shows or in variety shows, so they can't secure the attention they need. That's why for so many groups, their first win at Music Bank is usually a make it or break it situation. In May 2022, there was an investigation by police when LaSerfim won over Lee myung Wung at Music Bank since the numbers were kinda shady. People were wondering how exactly this rookie group, despite being from the Big Four, could score their first win against the Ajoma loved Lee myung Wung. However, the Music Bank win doesn't come for years for some groups, and sometimes it never actually comes. Without a staple fandom, wins, or recognition, the group usually disbands after a few years, or even the company cuts its contract short. There were groups that saved themselves from disbandment at the very last minute, like Brave Girls with their viral song Rollin' or EXID with their viral Honey fan cam. Sadly, there are countless groups that had few comebacks, but none of them were able to catch the attention of the masses. Sometimes it's the artists themselves who have to reach out to get into a variety show or to get known among the general public. During their debut, Seventeen Sung Kwong contacted variety show host himself to get onto TV so he could promote his group. Still, even when the group is trying its best to become liked by the general public, it's the public that might not be interested. There are way too many people who are happy either only standing one group or only willing to check out the groups that come from the big companies. The obvious differences become even more prominent when the end of the year shows come around. The nominations are swarmed with more or less familiar names, and even the Rookie of the Year category is full of groups that come from the biggest companies. The groups that come from small companies realistically never had a chance to win an award. Is there any hope for groups from small companies? According to professionals, there is. Professor Lee Gu Tag, who teaches pop music and media at George Mason University, Korea, said that the breaking point for groups from smaller companies was the COVID-19 pandemic when everyone was forced to cancel their schedules. He said, In a way, this leveled the playing field for smaller agencies. They're less disadvantaged in terms of online activities because it's open for everyone to access. Domestic TV show appearances are less important in attracting foreign fans because it's easier for them to watch K-pop idols online. In a way, targeting fans outside of Korea has never been more accessible. Smaller groups doing content like variety shows and V-Lives is also a way of connecting that only got more popular during the pandemic. And even when it was mostly foreign fans supporting the group, it's better than not being supported at all. Do you think groups from small companies have it hard? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye!